So, this morning we covered how to find multiple records, right? So again, I always start with views because frankly, you, everybody, if you're gonna be using the system in some way, shape, or form, you're gonna have at least one. You're gonna be working with them through the system. Um, so now that we know how to find multiple records, let's talk about one, what it looks like on the contact record, and then the documentation, cases, and tasks. So that is what we're gonna be talking about today. So let me reiterate some things. This system is growing and it's a work in progress. So what you're seeing right now today is not the finished product. <coughs> all of your data pieces, all the fields that you're collecting are not currently in here. And obviously they're not populated. And your page layouts are not um, solidified. That is something that you guys will be doing, not you all, but more Marcus. <laughs> Marcus and Gina will be doing um, as you guys get closer um, to having more things completed. So again, it's a little work in progress, but this is getting you prepared for your usage in the system. Again, business processes um, are still being solidified, so this is a great opportunity to think about how you guys want to use this. Um, Marcus, did you want to start us off with something before about the, we... the case stuff? About contacts and cases before we get started? Sure, yeah, we can talk uh, broadly about that. Okay. Oh, oh, don't forget to hit record on the... Yeah, I think we did that. Okay. Yeah, so we're good. Um, I think, so Gina, who did you have in the room on Monday? Was it everybody here? No. Not give up. Raise my hand if you were there on Monday. On Monday? On Monday? Monday? Yeah. Oh, the advisor meeting. The advisor <laughs> So some folks have heard this from me, some have not. Um, oh, you mean Friday. 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 Are you talking about Friday? You mentioned the Monday. I talked to them on Monday, but your case is in contact. <coughs> they were two set, subsets of people. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So I just want to make sure everybody's up to get a general base baseline of understanding. So um, as you know, Brandy talked about a little bit earlier, we've got the contact is the person, and then the cases are interactions associated with that person. Does everybody grasp that piece of it? So, um, so what we can do then is we'll have a person come in. So if they inquire, say, on the SCS inquiry form, that person is getting, go it's assigned to a person, in this case it's going to Lois. Lois is then assigning it to the respective person in the office that is responsible for that, whether it be a program or a particular initiative. If you're going out on the road, we're building some forms that track, track back to the person that's on the road, so we'll also have that capability as well. So like Richard, if you're out of police department, say you've got an inquiry form on a laptop you want people to fill out, it'll tie, be tied right back to you so that you own that record right through until they're coming into the class. So we'll be able to build those forms as well. What we're then going to be able to do is these cases that get assigned, the inquiry form, and we have to talk about how CS is going to handle this right now. I think right now it's just going to Lois. But when the inquiry form is completed, there's a case that's automatically assigned to a person that's connected to that contact record. So, so if I ask for information about paralegal studies, then that contact goes into the system and gets assigned to Lois, who's then going to sign it out to the paralegal advisor. Who's that in here? I'm not sure who that is. Okay, so Pam. So the PM will get that assigned as a case. What we can then do is then I'd work with the DEDGE, and the DEDGE might be building a communication plan that is for, say, the paralegal studies program. And maybe you determine that you want somebody called on the first day, and then you want them called again maybe in a week. I don't know what your process looks like, but we can build those out. So that then those cases then get assigned to you. So when you're building these types of views and you've got your open cases set up, so we, we just worked on Joanne's for example, so she's got a list of all the cases that are assigned to her on a given day. Your goal is gonna be when I come in in the morning or whatever time you come in, is to clear out that list of cases. So cases are no longer the people, we've gotten away from that. So now you've got an open case and those open cases can be named based on the activity in the funnel. So if you've got a student that hasn't been contacted in a couple days, there might be a call that says, you know, seven day call or two week call or something that's built into the communication plan by the dead. Those get automatically assigned and will live in that list. So when you log in, you're constantly gonna have a list that's changing. It's gonna be dynamic on a regular basis. And your goal will just be whatever that tactic is, I have to do that and then I close that case. Make any sort of notes you want and then I'm sure you'll talk about case messages a little this afternoon. Um, so we just wanna make sure that we're all kind of on the same page on how that's going to be if you think about it as a help desk ticket, you call and somebody has, you call Dell and get a problem, you get forward to somebody in India, and you get somebody in California, and you get bounced around. Well, there's a case that's assigned to you, and then there's various activities that get assigned to that. So, and Brandy can talk to you more about that. But that's kind of how we're processing forward, and then we've got the uh, opportunity with the communication plan to ensure that ultimately every continuing study student, or in my case, every graduate student, 
is getting the same touch points from us regardless. So if you talk to this student or this student, they've all gotten the same experience coming in. Because we want to ensure, obviously, a quality experience. And we're all handling a lot of students. You guys in particular have hundreds of students that you're trying to get through and you're trying to get them quickly. So we want to make sure that they're all getting that same kind of uniform experience, same emails, same types of phone calls. Everybody has their nuances, but we want to track those directly. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Perfect. So I wanted to have that context for you guys of, of why you're about to learn these things, because now we're going to talk about the actual processes, right? The actual functionality in the system. So we have, first thing we're going to do is we're going to search for the contact records that we have created. If you were not here earlier and did not create a contact record, then you will search for mine, okay? So what we're going to do up here at the top, I want you to either type in your name or the word delete, because that's also going to find you. Um, these search parameters up here, you can type in first names, last names, full names, partial email addresses, phone numbers, and I believe student IDs that would come from Kali at some point in the future, but not today. Uh, so I'm going to search for my record. I'm just going to type in Brandy, you look for your record, or mine, it doesn't really matter. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to type in you. I'm going to show you what happens when you get that. So again, you should see something like this. If you type in your name, your record should be up there. If you type in delete, you see everybody who has delete somewhere in their name is showing up. So before you click on anything, I want to talk to you about navigation. This is something that every client is going to struggle with, and this is why I talk to you guys about the tree, right? So in a relational, bless you, in a relational database, we're not dealing with one record anymore. We're dealing with multiple records that have relationships, right? So our tree trunk is our contact, and all of our branches are the relationship items connected to that person, okay? Which means, functionally, where you click in this system matters a great deal. Let me go ahead and tell you, you will mess this up. And I mean that in the nicest way possible. Why? Because you just don't know all the places to click. For example, in the future when your applications are in here, you will have a list of applications. And usually you'll be like, to get to a person's application, I can click on their name. That is not the case in this system. Okay? So as we go through, I'm going to tell you where to click and where it's going to lead you. Now in your search results, you have four hyperlinked fields. First name, email, full name, and last name. <coughs> when I click on anything with the student's name, first name, last name, full name, contact name in some modules, it will. 100% of the time take you to their contact record. That is their tree trunk. And remember, the information that's on that record is the basic demographic info about that student. Okay, you with me on that? No matter where that lives, whether I am in a case <coughs> view, an application view, an event view, if I click on a student's name, it will take me to their contact record. Do we all understand that? Okay. When I click on an email address in the system, it is going to open up an opportunity for me to send an ad hoc email. So much like that send an email under the action button we saw in the view, does the same thing. So much like I was saying to Jeannie, there are multiple ways to do the exact same thing in this system. Okay, so again, when you click on a student's name, it takes you to the contact record. When you click on an email address, it opens up the opportunity to send an ad hoc email to that student. So let's access contact record. So find your name and click on it. Where is my name? There it is. Boop. Now, your screen does not look like my screen. I have extra stuff up there, and don't worry, you will have that here in mere moments. You are now on a contact record. Know this because in my dark gray bar it has the student's name. And that little Rolodex sheet, and that lets me know contact record. Remember, a lot of these screens are going to look very similar. So again, currently your layout is a little haphazard. This will change. You're seeing um, lots of different things, SES and grad information. Um, we will be restricting that, so you will really only be able to see the stuff that matters to you and whatever your job is. That is some. That is a little ways down the line. Um, but if you scroll through this, you will see all of the information that you populated on your inquiry form, it's automatically in here, okay? Mm, excuse me. Now up at the top left, you will not have all of these items obviously, but you'll have some of them. So again, if I want to edit any information on this, 
on this person's contact record, I can hit edit. Or if I hover over any of the fields, I'll also see the edit symbol there. Both of those will open up the opportunity to edit this record. So again, you have access to do this pretty much all the time. If you are an administrator or some special person, you have the potential to again delete. We also see the clone, which we are never going to do. Um, if you have certain permissions, you have the ability to find and merge duplicates. So if I think this might be a potential duplicate and I have these options here, I can do that. I think we took it away from most of you just you know, to make sure we have a, a business process in place before we, we bring that back out. Um, and then there's the opportunity to print the screen that you're on if you need to get this out on paper and disperse it to the people. Now, what I am seeing, when I look at a contact record, you see I have these extra tabs. You don't have those yet, but you will. This is where a relational database shines. If I'm looking at my tree trunk, I actually also want to look at all the branches that this student has, right? In one place, I want to be able to toggle through and see what is their application? What cases do they have? Um, are they registered for events? Have we been emailing them? What's about their contact log? All of these are related information pieces. You will see this button throughout the system because pretty much everything is related to something. You with me on that? Yeah. So I want you to add in the following. You have to add them in manually. What's great is once you add these in once, they are available for any student that you look at. So this is a one time only thing that you're gonna to have to do. Here's what you're gonna do. Related information, let's click on that. <coughs> Top right. Notice super long list, right? Because we're in the tree trunk record, I have access to all of the branches. Here's what I want you guys to add in today. Um, go ahead and add in applications, even though they're not live yet. Just, kill the, just go ahead and knock that out. So applications. You have to keep going back to add more in. So I want you to add in cases. So applications, cases, cases. Even though it absolutely shows up in the other menu, just click cases. Just click cases. Don't worry about any of the submenus yet. Contact log. Educations and tasks. <clears throat> so this is a base. You can, of course, whatever you do in your jobs, you can add or take away whatever you need. So whenever you're looking at an individual student, you will have access to the pieces of information throughout the system that you want to see. Make sense? That has to be done for each student? Nope. Done right now, and then it, for any student, it'll automatically be up there. <clears throat> so one and done. But you got to do it first. Okay. So let's talk about some of these um, in more detail. So first, click on the contact log um, tab. And by the way, you can change the order by clicking and dragging these tabs. This is unique to you. No other user is seeing what you're seeing, the way you have it laid out. So contact log. At minimum, you guys should have three entries here. Yes? Yes. Yep. Yes. I love that. So what is the contact log document? Any radius originated communication or action. What does that include? Well, obviously, any ad hoc emails that we send, any mass communications that we send, any form submissions that a student does. So if they're filling out multiple inquiry forms, we're going to see it here. If they're filling out applications on applications, we're going to see every time they touch those forms. <laughs> All the time. There's also the capability, um, which we will get into at a later training date, for you all to actually log into the application as the student. So some of you will be working with applicants and are like, oh, I don't know what's going on in. Right? You get those calls. Um, you will also be able to do that, and that is also documented on the contact log. It will say you logged in as the student on their application. Also, um, Outlook plugin that is available on Compass. If you are sending um, emails back and forth with students, which we all tend to do, 
um, there is a plugin that links to your Radius account that allows you to choose to send those emails into Radius to document so that everybody knows what you're talking about with the student. It's optional, you don't have to do it for every communication. But that is also documented under the contact law. So now we will see everything that we're talking to the student about. How do we feel about that? Good. Yes. Part of the phone contact still in there. We'll that here in a second. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So notice there is no opportunity to add a new item to the contact log. It is automatic. Okay. Those will automatically be here um, for anything that. Uh, let's see. <coughs> Some of these items, which you'll be able to preview those. I am super excited. By hitting this little paper icon and expanding your preview window. Now, <clears throat> you guys are all on, for most of you are on screens with higher resolutions, they're pretty big. Your actual computer at your desk is probably might be a little bit smaller. When it's your first time adding in these related information tabs, what often happens is that your preview window is automatically maximized, which makes it look like there's nothing there. Okay, so you might want to note this down because if you get back to a computer like, I know something's there and it's not showing. It's because your preview window is maximized. It's the very first time you came in here. Just minimize it and you only have to do that once per tab. Does that make sense? Yes? Verbals? Yes. The rules yes. don't change yeah. after lunch. <laughs> okay, so there's your contact log. I added in educations and I have information online that you guys don't have on yours, but that's okay. This is to let you know that on the application, you will have the ability to ask for their school history. It will automatically transfer here and establish a relationship. So it says that I went to um, Governor's School of Innovation and Transylvania University. I actually did go to Transylvania University. Um, you'll be able to see that there. Um, I also have an application that I filled out. I thought I filled it out yesterday. Did I? Where'd it go? Did you delete it? What did I delete? I don't know. The applications, I, I checked this morning, they were all gone. I was wondering if you deleted them. I didn't touch them. Sheesh. <gasps> what did you have? Oh, oh, it's <laughs> Wow. You can't no, track that? <laughs> See, I'm the default default person. Okay. Yeah. I, I believe in you all. You shouldn't do it. We just have a half hour lunch of training loads. <laughs> Three o'clock. Yeah, no, I'll check into that. Things one. are bad when the two trainers them lost stuff, right? <laughs> I'll check into it. It may have just been deleted by mistake because it was a test app. But either way, if I had an application, you'd be able you want to me to see. Fill one out? No, it's not. It's not. It's okay. Um, you'll be able to see that there. And again, this is just to get you comfortable in saying you'll be able to see everything that a student does in Radius. You will have 100% access. So whatever your job is, you will be able to have immediate access to those items. We're happy about that. Is an inquiry considered an app? No. Because we filled out inquiry forms, right? Or did right. we fill out application forms this morning? No, we filled out inquiry forms. They are separate. So why would they would they show up in application? No. Okay. No. Because I thought that's what you wanted. No, I filled out an app yesterday oh, with the oh, admins and we, we did some stuff but um, <laughs> to test, but it's not here. That's okay. All right, so let's, any questions about obviously the related information piece? Not very difficult, right? Mm -hmm. Didn't think so. Well, I do have one. Yes, question. okay. What was the last one we were in? The one before you did the... Educations? Um, oh, no, the contact log. Contact log, yes. How come there's stuff in there already? Because, good question. So, you all filled out inquiry forms? That counts as yeah. contact. So, everything that is radius generated is automatically going to be there. Oh. And we're supposed to be able to preview it at this point? Some of the items, not everything. But I didn't, I didn't register for an event. You filled out the inquiry form right. with the delete. That is what that is. So it says inquiry form submission, incoming inquiry form web inquiry. Those are your three items. I have, I have, I have, like, I have eight items. Ooh, you're fancy. I have a lot more too. I didn't do any of this stuff. Oh, that's okay. It's from three seven. It, we, you we play around with, with records all the time. These are all test records, so. Oh, you're playing around with my record though. Yeah, we're, we're yeah. playing around, <laughs> and you'll like it. And it'll be on. <laughs> you know what probably happened is that Lois has had a test record in there for a while. Yeah. And it probably Duke checked her own email yeah. today. So any of your old contacts are still in there. Yeah. 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 It's okay. 
<laughs> it just shows you that we are tracking you. You'll never get away. This is how they do it, right? <laughs> okay, so let's talk cases and tasks. Uh, and I like to talk about both of these at the same time because they are alike, but they are also very different. Okay? So let's start with cases and then we'll move on to tasks. So everyone click on the cases tab on your record or my record. And you should already have a case there, at least one, correct? Mm -hmm. Because as Marcus said, every time a student fills out an inquiry form, <coughs> it will automatically create a case. And the idea behind that is if a student is self-selecting and saying, hey, I have questions or I'm interested, this is now your call to action to be like, what up, student? You have questions, I got answers. Let's do this. Hey, right? Let me ask a question. Yes, ma'am. Suppose um, you know you, you see them up here, right? And ultimately, they probably got 15 of these with different colleges, and they decide not to come here. OK. Does this go into a queue, or do you just, do they, does somebody delete this? Because they're not interested. You're going ahead again. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, that's more business process. So let me, I seriously doubt these will be deleted. They just yeah. won't be acted on. OK. It may be a It'll be closed. category. They're gonna, you're going to close it with a There's comment? A see where it says status? You would, it would be closed. Oh, right. You would close it. All right. Got it. Got it. OK. So um, let me tell you the three ways that cases are created. So one, inquiry form submission, 100% of the time. These may not be cases that you will use all the time, but they will be in the system. Okay? So when Marcus was talking about those internal inquiry forms that you may take to events and have people fill out on the iPads or the laptops, those two will create cases. Now whether you need to act on those, that's an internal business process that you guys are going to need to figure out, but they will be in the system. There is documentation on it. Okay. Second way that cases are created is through communication plans. So um, communication plans are a mix of automated sequential emails that we send out to specific students, prospects, applicants, etc. But we can also insert cases which are personal calls to action. Right. So I may send an applicant three emails saying give me your stuff and then after those three emails a case may generate that says you need to call this student and get their stuff. Does that make sense? Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. I have a question. Yes. So when we're creating the communication plan for the personal message to go out to the admissions officers, does it allow you to identify or the, the specific officer, or is it just like a general one that goes out to whomever owns the case? Either or. And I'm going to have you pin your communication stuff, because once we get done with them, we'll have some admin time, and I would like you to stay for that. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So in this cases tab, right? Yeah. How come, okay, this is kind of like a two-part how come. Okay. How come, in my cases, I only have one, and it's the one with my name, but Lois is the case owner. Like, why would I? Marcus, would you like to answer that? So like, why would I get that? Are, are you seeing the SCS inquiry form? Is that what you're yeah. 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 So the, um, Every form has a case owner. Every form creates a case, and the case has to have an owner. So, from business prospect, business process standpoint, what we were told is that in SCS, all inbound inquiries from the web would go to Lois first, right. and then Lois would, based on the changes in the process, and, the, and there's been a lot of changes recently, so. Lois is kind of the keeper of understanding what that process is. Mm -hmm. So then she takes that case and assigns it off to the appropriate counselor. So Why is that's it coming up in my dashboard? It's her case. It's You're not coming up in your case. dashboard. It's coming up on your contact record. You're on the record itself, yeah. This we is are now dashboard. in a contact, in your student record. I'm in. This is you as a person, as, yeah. a, as a student. So the student has been assigned to Lois, you. Yeah. And then Lois is going to assign you to the appropriate okay. counselor. But you're trying to figure out why do you see it? Like, why do I see it? it like that, that would, Everybody will see everything. Here's the thing. Because we're all just looking at a student record. Okay. And here's the reality of what cases are. So let me let me kind of tell you what's, what cases really kind of do. Cases are either calls to action, mail them something, phone calls, whatever. And they're documented conversations that any person has had with that student. So for example, I have two cases, one owned by Lois and one owned by Grad Admissions. 
because both of those people are talking to me. What this allows you guys to do is have transparency in how you are working with students, right? I like to think of like you call your cell phone or your cable provider, you escalate that issue, and every single time you get escalated, you have to explain yourself over and over and over again. And doesn't that make you really frustrated? Mm -hmm. I hate it. Yes. Right? We our students go through that too when they have to go to different people and nobody knows the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing. We want to eliminate that. And that's why everybody, when they go to any student, can see the history of the conversations and calls to action. Does that make sense? Assuming they logged it in. They interfaced. <laughs> yeah. The automatic ones, like the inquiry form, comp plan, those are automatically going to come. What we want you to do is when you are having these meaningful conversations with students is also come in here and create a case or add to that case and say, hey, we talked about this. So okay? That's what a new case would be if I had a conversation with a student, I could just potentially type a new narrative, a little narrative in there about Yes. Okay. And I'm gonna show you guys some other stuff too, because it's not always adding a new case. Sometimes it's hmm? adding exactly one. Adding new messages. Because these are also going to help you identify topics, right? Mm -hmm. So common topics we talk to students about applications, financial aid, you know, trouble our troubled students who need a little extra hand holding, right? Cases allow you to keep those conversations in line. Right? Imagine holding a folder and you just keep seeing just pages after page and you have to look through every single page to find the stuff that's in that is applicable to you. Cases allow you to categorize that. So if I primarily work in financial aid, I don't necessarily care about what happened on the inquiry form. But if you had a financial aid question, that should be documented. And I can add to that, see what you said, and add my own comments to it. Yes, ma'am. I'm getting a little confused only because of some of the things that we used to do, and now that we're, we're, new, we're implementing, implementing new ways of, um, of documenting how we communicate mm -hmm. or what we've communicated. So, if, if can you just bear with me for no, a second? No, it's okay. Yeah. Um. So for a case, like let's say, um, you're talking about. So every time I, your student, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And every time I reach out to you, um, it's a touch point. So every time I touch, there's a touch point. Mm -hmm. Is there a case created? Ideally, I would say yes. Okay. But that really because depends. what I'm understanding is that the conversation it continues within one case it and can. not multiple cases. Both. And okay. I'm going to show you. So let me let me. Help oh, I know, I know, yeah. I know. You could do both. Mm -hmm. But just for clarification, I want to know the system that we're going to move forward. If we're just going to do multiple cases within one case, or one case and I mean, and create a new case each time you touch the person. Let me show you this, and maybe this will help answer. Because again, it's a process question that you're asking, and process okay. probably hasn't been developed yet. Okay. I showed this to the admins yesterday. I'm in my Hobson's training tenant. This gives you an idea of what your life is going to look like in here. Right now, your stuff is empty. This is your real life. Lots of stuff happening. I got app cases. I got undergrad cases. I got calls to make. This is what you guys will be living in in real life. Let me go to a student record, what we're doing here. I'm a big Downton Abbey fan. Lady Mary. Again. Same thing here, but let me go to her case records. Mary has multiple cases, different types of topics, right? We have some inquiry form submission, that summer stay over, the general inquiry plan, but I also have some topics that are common, like application, right? But look here at my total messages. This is really gonna dictate how you guys wanna move forward in this. Some of these points don't have a lot of back and forth. Like this incoming call, maybe answered a question, it wasn't related to something we'd already done, I wanted to document it. But my application case here has 11 touch points, which means this student and I and somebody else talked about an application topic on more than one occasion. Gotcha. Does that 11 mean it was updated 11 times? Let me show you what that means. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna click here on that number 11. These are case <laughs> messages. Right? So, in relation to that big topic of applications, look at what we talked to Mary about. App fees, requirements, change of program of interest, you got transcript issues, right? All of these are related to the application. So if I am an application person, I would want you to add messages to that existing case so that I can see everything that all of these people have touched on that topic. 
that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. it does. Right? Now, when it's a different topic, we start a new case. Oh, I'm confused now. If, <laughs> if, if uh, because multiple people have access and mm -hmm. there may be multiple people touching one student, if someone uh, did uh, had a touch point with a student relative to that topic but didn't add it in that topic, mm -hmm. can you add it? Yes, you can. And take it out of the other list? You would, I mean, it would be a copy and paste. It's not super fluid, yeah, 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 yeah. but you would say, well, actually, you could. You can just, if I go back in the case message, and I'll come back and do step-by-step -step with yep. this, but every message is assigned to a case, so you would just change the case. Okay. All right, so let me back up a little bit, because Lois was confused, and I don't want her to be confused. Um, one client, I, I thought, descri described <laughs> cases and case message relations really well. Think of a case as a briefcase, right? And in that briefcase, there are files. And each briefcase really owns, you know, this is this client, this is this client, and this is this, you know, if I'm a lawyer, I'm a lawyer. Um, this case, this case, this case, right? The messages are the files about that case, that topic. Okay? And so we're adding conversations to that topic. We're adding more files into the case, more case messages to the case. If it's a whole other topic or a whole other call to action, so inquiry, that's another call to action. Lois is going to get that and be like, oh, they're interested in paralegal studies. I'm going to change the owner to Tracy. Tracy's then going to say, all right, I'm going to have these conversations about paralegal studies. Okay, so is it safe to say that as a, as a or as a, admins, they need to come up with the, what those things are going to exactly. be? Like, you can't have a free-for-all of, of discussions, correct? Exactly. Okay. exactly. Then I do get it. All right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good. All right. Um, and I like showing you mine because, again, this is what it's really going to look like. It's hard to conceptualize when there's nothing there. This is what life is going to be like. I'm going to say, okay. Um, I go and I'm like, oh, they talked about the app fee. What did they talk about? Student called, three, three free waivers available, blah, blah, blah. I did all this stuff. And you'll also notice the channels are available. So I can document this is a phone call. I sent an email that's related to that. This is just an internal comment. They came into the office and visited me and we talked about this and I wanted to document it. Yeah. I'm sorry, how did you preview that under the that list of cases? Clicking here. Oh. Okay. And that little icon, and then it's make my preview windows automatically up. You can also click on the case message subject and go into it. Right, which I've been doing, but that, that's new to me, so I'm, I like that. Me too. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. And just being able to quickly see and get a comprehensive view of the details of those conversations in one place. Super duper helpful. <coughs> Do we get this concept? Yes. Concept, yes. Concept, yes. So let's talk practice. So I'm going back into your tenant. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to, air quotes, work this SCS inquiry form case. You ready? Yes. Now, to get into the case, again, where you click matters. So we're not going to click on the student's name because where does that take us? To the contact, contact page. page. So smart. We can either click on the case subject or the case ID. Both unique identifiers that will take me into the case record. So click on your SCS inquiry form case. So again, your screen's going to look slightly different than mine, and that's because I've added in another branch. So here's what you're seeing on the case record. The case subject is the topic of conversation or the call to action, right? So the topic of this conversation is somebody submitted a form. I am talking to you about your form submission, your general inquiry, right? We all agree? Yeah. Yeah. Now, cases specifically are associated with contacts. They have to be. It is a required piece. You'll see there's the student automatically there. Case owner, again, for SCS, by default, is going to be Lois. She's going to look at that student's information, decide who needs to own it. She will then adjust the ownership to another user. So if I hit edit on that, you'll see this is what Lois can do. She'll say, I'm going to make this. Tracy, right? Boom. Next, the status. So by default, open cases mean I got some work to do. This is something I need to address. This is going to be cleaned up quite a bit. 
But what you really care about is open, closed, and in progress. That's going to be what's left in the future. Open means I need to work on it. In progress means I'm working on it. I've addressed it, but there are some things I need to do. Closed means I'm out. I'm done. I've done everything I need to do for this particular case. You can, of course, reopen closed cases and change the statuses. There's no mechanism that prevents you from going back up the funnel or the tree. They're just values. Okay? Source, this came in through the web. That's automatically populated because it was a web inquiry form. I also have various sources like phone. This is a phone call. They sent me an email. They walked in. They faxed me something. You guys can add a different values to this if you feel like you need some. The types. This is going to be to your benefit because the more standardized data pieces you have, the better your view building is going to be because you will then need to build case views. So what we built were contact views this morning. Again, that's functionality that's going to take you throughout the system. Maybe Tracy's going to say, find all open cases, status is open, mm -hmm. cases that have me as the case owner. So as soon as Lois makes that transfer, boom, they pop up in her view. That's her workflow. Mm -hmm. You with me on that? Yeah. Okay. So the type, if I want to be real, you know, real special, and maybe I want to say I want to have all of my inquiry cases in one, I want to have all my application cases in something else. You guys have that ability. Remember, you build your views. So inquiry cases, obviously anything generated from the inquiry form, everything else can fall under here. If there are additional types, categories of cases, you guys have the ability to add those values. If I say you all, I mean Marcus and the admins. But if you see an area of opportunity, please say something. Priority, I thought we agreed to get rid of this. What's that? Priority. I, um, I actually just... You see it on your end, but I think I put it on the field. Um, you took it out? What's the, the, so that this group doesn't see it. I just hit it. Okay. I see it. Do you see it? I don't mm -hmm. see it. Oh, no, Lois, you're on a different status than the other person. You're special. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, campaign source. So if we send out any mass communications, last push for apps, you know, thank you for inquiring, blah, 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 and a student calls you and says, hey, I got this email from you guys. I have questions. That happens. You do have the opportunity when you're having that conversation to link this case back to that email. It's not something you have to do, but it is an option. I wouldn't be too worried about doing that, to be quite honest. Then there is a description, which can either be the details of what you need to do to complete this case. So that's more specific to cases that come from comp plans, which we'll talk about um, after they leave. For example, you need to do a seven-day call after the app is submitted. What do you need to talk about with that student? They would have text here that say, when you talk to them, ask them X, Y, Z, you know, go through these items. Or you could use this to summarize your conversation initially. I'm not a big fan of that because I want to add it to the case messages. I want time and date stamps on these things. I want ownership, right? So. What you guys to either save and create message or create new case message at the top. You all see that? Okay, so now we're in the case message module. If the case is the topic of conversation, the message is the back and forth. The actual words, the actual details of that conversation. Okay? So, you'll see things that have already pulled over. Related to the case. The student, now you're like, hey girl, we have separate case message owner and sent by. Why is that? Well, think about this. We are not on islands, right? We are generally a team. Uh, Juan, who's on your team? Who works with you? Joya and Lois and Octavia. Okay. So let's just say Octavia is on vacation. She's in Bali doing all types of island life. And work comes in for her. And you're like, okay, I'm her backup, right? This is something that is owned by Octavia, but I'm the person who sent it. Accountability and transparency. You own that conversation. You're the person who's responsible for that student in real life, but I'm the person who had this particular conversation with them. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yes. yes? Okay. So these are independent. And again, these are just users in the system if it ever decides to load up on me which doesn't look like it is. Yeah, they're all still. Why? 
technology, right? Mm -hmm. To the right of that, message type, incoming, student initiated, outgoing, <coughs> Roger Williams initiated, internal, a note, a comment about this topic that we have not communicated with the student, but is important for anybody who is talking to them. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. My example in my tenant, I have a comment here that says, beware of fraud. It's a comment. Lady Mary was like, hey, it's taking forever. Um, what this says is she had her identity stolen, so hey, everybody be on, be on lookout for like fake financial aid applications coming in on behalf of the student, right? Well, there we go. Boom, boom, boom. Is that doing that? It's the wrong one. But you get the idea. So I'm going to say this is outgoing in this case. I got, or Tracy in this event, got the case. She's making the call, it is outgoing. I'm now calling the student a response. Underneath that is the case message subject. What did we talk about this time? And so you saw that on my Lady Mary, app fees, requirements. That's what we talked about this time. So anybody can pinpoint say, oh, there's an app fee conversation in the whole topic of applications. You following? Okay. Um, channel, again, specific to this conversation because as we're talking overall topic it could be email it could be phone call it could have come into the office what happened this time so let me put a subject in I'll just say inquiry follow-up there channel phone call Boop. message content required now we're gonna go ham and cheese on details so call student I'm interested in paralegal studies. Mom was a paralegal and has hopes of becoming a lawyer. I'm going to invite students to come to home uh, hotels. And again, I'm just making this up, obviously. But this is what you're going to do. You're just recording the details of this conversation. I'm a personal fan of be as detailed as possible, right? Because again, you're going to want to reference these notes. And if someone else is your backup, they're going to want to reference these notes. OK? Now, I'm going to save this case message. At some point. In the future. Yeah. Um, Juan and I got bounced out. Mm -hmm. All right, this is from the internet. <coughs> from the internet. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Roger Williams, get your internet in order. Oh, I think the Wi Fi went down. Oh, yeah. joy! Yeah. Yay. Yay, this is fun for a tech training. This is a good time for a break, right? Nice. Okay, let's take a break. <laughs> Nobody else? <laughs> Moses is like, I am ready to go. Fine. I mean, we Who's with you? Stay with you. 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 Stay with so the person who was in Cuba? Wow. Did you see it? Yeah. Damn. But um, you get it from mom. Don't bring it back over here. Are you getting your travel Yeah. You should at least get your headphones. That's why you do something. No. She was looking at my resume. She's with paper at me. And I'm bored of pizza. She's thinking, why is it? I know I've been working in this for. If I'm like, I've been doing things. Like a month, she's like, no, 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 no,
right? Case is used for documentation of my individual interactions with students. And it is my call to action to reach out to them. So I think you had the question like the phone calls and all those things. Those are actually just case messages documented on the contact log. They count as communications. Those will be documented there. In the contact log, you will also be able to view the details of those individual interactions. Yay? Yay. Yay. So let me preface, let me tell you this. 
Cases and case messages is the hardest part of this, okay? Every single client, and I've been doing this for four years, I'm on the road 80% of the time, I see a lot of you guys. Universally, this is the hardest thing to adapt to, all right? It's a very different way of thinking, and there's a, a lot of business processes that have to be adjusted in order to make this very successful, all right? Take the time to really think and plan out how you really want to maximize this stuff. You see there's a lot of information that can be housed there, very valuable, so you gotta think about what's realistic for you, okay? And also that standardization, so Lois said that earlier. Are there ways to standardize? Heck yeah there are, and we definitely want to do that. Now I wish I could show that to you right now. <laughs> you got Gina, you got Nadege, and we got Marcus, so you're not the default at no. No, it's not her. <laughs> she didn't do it. Um, there are something that is called case templates. So if you're starting a new case, and if I can try to pull something up, um, I will try to do my best. But there's a case template. What this allows you all to do is to standardize those cases. Oh, please, maybe, maybe. Aha, case templates. This is my training tenant. I got lots of them, right? Standardized things. So if we all talk about um, like the postcard case, mail a postcard. This is somebody's follow-up. Here's what we need to talk about with them. We have those options. Let me do this one. Five. Just call a person, create a message with the combo. Bam, right? The details. Notice how it filled out everything at the top for me automatically. We want to do that. Now, we'll do the case message. That's still on you. This is a huge step saver, right? If we can standardize some of the content topics, Man, that's going to make this so much easier for us to adapt to, right? Can you send them some of the top topics so they have something to work with? I sure will. Oh, cool. they got it. Gina got that, right, Gina? Yes, I said yes. So, Brian, it sounded like for the room, unless I'm misreading, it sounded like there's still some general. I know that there was a process question about how we're using cases versus case messages. Mm -hmm. um, it, and uh, maybe I'm not sensing. Does that seem to be kind of nebulous at the moment? People still don't quite understand what we're using them for. Yes, People? No. I get it now. We're good. Because I mean, our thought was is that when we create you know, five day call, you go in and you make the note and assuming you connect with the student, you make your note and you close it and that's the end of it. But if you have something like a student calls and says, I'm interested in a certain program or something, you create a case, but then you with the say Juan talks to somebody and then assigns it over to who's doing CWPD? Candace. Okay, yeah, so okay. Candace. So then say Juan so Juan talks to the student and then says, Oh wait a second, this is a CWPD student. So he makes a case message in that case and then assigns the case over to Candace. Candace then follows up with them because of the TV show and closes it. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Does so that every, make sense? So every time you touch that student, you need to close that case afterwards. So there, do, there won't be a case that has 11 messages in it. Is that what you're saying? It can, but only if that activity needs continued messages attached to it. So if the activity is completed, you close the case. But if it's an open activity, where there's multiple people and multiple touch points, you might create, so for example, say Juan is the only one on a case. He calls the student and gets a voicemail. Maybe he makes a note in a case message that says, got a voicemail, I need to keep this open and calls exactly. it again. So then he goes in and creates, and calls again, say in two days, and puts a note and finally connected with the student, <coughs> close the case. Close the case. And then now we have the initial email that opens the case. There's no other action besides that, that response email. We should be closing those Right. Yes. The one that goes out from the desk, it shouldn't stay open. Right. So as soon as it goes out, there's no other correspondence within that case. We right. should close it. That initial case, we have to decide how we handle it. In my right. office, like we mail a packet of information. So for us, we assign it to the students. That initial, because that initial case, you can't get rid of it. Automatically happens. Yeah. So we assign that to the students, and they, that's their flag to send out the packet, and they close okay. it. Okay. But over here, maybe it's just a case that goes to Lois, who then just acknowledges it was there and then maybe closes that case, but then assigns a one-day call to one, or, or a zero-day call to yeah. one, whatever you guys want to do. And then the DEG will build out the plan with Gina and whoever about what the follow-up calls will look like from a scheduled standpoint. That's not to say you don't make calls in the middle, but. And those will be on different cases? They would be different cases, yeah. Each interaction will be a different case. 
or activity? Yes, yeah, Brenda. Brenda. Okay, that's very simple. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> I just want to backtrack for a second. Yeah. I just try to do the same thing when you just showed me, and I, and I messed up. <coughs> okay. Um, so from your contact list, from our J, from the training view. Mm -hmm. uh, and I want to go into one of those, one of those contacts, or one of those students, or uh -huh. right. Um, you said to go ahead and search it. Up um, top. Well, searching is if you know what you're looking for. Okay. Like I'm looking for an individual, I'll search up here. But if okay. it's in my list, I can just click on their name too. Okay, so you suggested to click on what? Name, first name, last name, full name. Okay. To get to the student's record. And once you get into the student's record, I remember you saying something about um, to create a case or to go into the case, you have to t uh, hit the, the inquiry part of it or? <laughs> cases, the cases tab. <coughs> oh, the ID. <laughs> Uh, case subject or the ID, which yeah. you go into the case. What, what, what was that? To go into the case. Okay. Yeah. Mine is still loading as well, yeah. so I can't even. So from there, if I wanted to go <coughs> to cases. Oh, okay, I got you. All right. Yeah. I get it now. Here or here. Got it. Sorry. I just oh, no, that's fine. Yeah. So that's what this is for. Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions? Because again, this is, this is, this is probably going to take you guys a few. A few go rounds to really wrap your heads around how really you're going to be using it day to day. But be thinking about those processes and how you want to use this because it's super powerful, mm -hmm. very exciting, at least on my end. How do you feel about this? Yes. Feeling good? Mm -hmm. Okay. One more thing, then we'll take wrap up questions, and then I will let you go into the world as beautiful butterflies like you are. Those are tasks. And I like talking about these together because um, sometimes we need to also create internal to-dos, all right? So cases specifically are student-specific. You have to have a student assigned to a case. Tasks, on the other hand, you do not. Tasks are really good for us to create an internal workflow either related to a student record or to something else. So question was, how can you use them, right? So tasks would be something like, if you want to have um, a, a form created, I may say, hey, I'm gonna create a task, assign her as the owner, she would then have a task view that says, these are all the things that I need to do today. Tasks are non-student specific. More for internally, user to user, I need you to do something. Does that Tasks could also be where Rather than assigning a case, you could send, let's say I have a question for Jeannie about Andrea, who's going to be coming into the PA program. Rather than assign a case, I could sign a task? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, life, right? Golly. But, but then you shouldn't assign a task because it won't be part of the record. Right, right? I was going to say, because case information is reportable, task right. information is not. Right. Everything in the system is reportable. Oh. Everything in the system is reportable. Let me see if I can get some some stuff up here. Give me a second. Can Give me some. Again? Yeah, All right, good times. Um, every data piece is reportable, right? Everything in the system we can build a view on, which means you guys have to kind of make some executive decisions. So if you're asking a question about a student, does that really count as a communication? Not really. No. You're just saying, I need details. I need information. I think, in my opinion, that may serve you better as a task. Hey, give me this piece of information or give this to somebody else who can do this job. Really, cases are directly related to the conversation, the interaction with the student. I'm calling them, I'm emailing them, I'm answering questions, that type of relationship. Tasks are more so, I need you to do something related to this. Can you push their financial aid app through because, you know, super admission, I don't know, you know your stuff. Um, things like that. Does that make that difference make yeah, sense? It does. It would be real great if I could show this to you. So I have a question. Yes. So on the student level, uh, when you're looking at all of the correspondence between, I don't know, all the different areas, like if it's a case message, you can see the task as well. It's listed out there as well. Mm -hmm. okay. So that identifies it as task versus case message versus yes. whatever. Yes. 
Do you have yes. to log in to see when stuff is assigned to you, or no. can you get notifications in your email? Mm -hmm. so, Go ahead. So um, when you're in the task, you can have it where it sends you an email. Um, but I've used the Outlook plug plugin, and the Outlook plugin actually syncs your task to your Outlook, so you don't have to be logged in. So I'm, I've been playing with that for, for the past week. So any task you assign yourself, you can actually load it to Outlook, so you're not logged into the cloud based system. But it was someone else assigns you the task yourself. If they're assigned, if it's if like, you're the owner, if you're the owner of the task, because it's uh, the Outlook plugin is logged in as you, mm -hmm. and so whenever you do the sync, it will sync it. So that's outside of being on the, um, but it doesn't work with 365. It only works with the actual the application Outlook. planner. You mean? Um, Outlook, it doesn't work with... Um, like OWA or yeah. Exchange, it has to be the actual Outlook app. It has to be the actual app, app, app on your computer. And it's those of us that are Mac users. Right? Oh yeah, uh, your Mac users are SOL. Yeah, because there's no plug <laughs> As of now, we're <laughs> superior, but we're screwed. <laughs> I have plugins. Now, there is, so Candace, there is an option for you to send a notification email when uh, for task assignment. Um, and higher level administratively, there is a way to automatically <laughs> generate tasks and automatically communicate, but that's a bigger conversation we're going to have today. <coughs> but the admins are aware of that, so if you have ideas about it, yeah, because when you hit email notification now, it sends me the email. You go to task and deferred, it sends the email right away. Yeah, but I was hoping that it would be right away. As a fair amount to say that those who are learning knew, yes. should just sign, just log in for now. Because what he's saying right now is totally like, yeah, don't worry about anything. Here's yeah. what I want you guys to do. Then we're kind of reaching the end of this. We all have test records in the system, and we have the test records of our colleagues. Right now, your system is a work in progress. Here's what I would love for you to do try to break it. They're probably like, what? Don't say that. But yes, seriously. Here's what you guys, you got to know where the information is, and we now have records so we can play with them. Play with them like they're your real students. Change their information. Create cases. Build the views to find these items. Poke all the holes. Your administrative team has done a really good job of building what they can. Now it's time for you guys to say you need more because you're the end users, right? So ignore what Juan said. <laughs> for just now you're not quite there yet but yes get in here you all have logins there are test records that you can play with play with them you don't have access to things you're not supposed to have access to so don't worry about breaking things on that front but build and touch and get really familiar with this it is going to take some time for you to feel really comfortable and the only way you're going to feel comfortable is going in there and doing stuff that makes sense? Providing yes. the internet. Yeah, internet um, connection down, yeah. is required. <laughs> um, this is also available on tablets. This is web-based, so you don't have to be on a computer. Tablets are okay. I will tell you this, if you're using like an iPad or something, some of the um, uh, secondary menus, so those arrows next to things on related information, those things won't work on tablets because it just doesn't have the dynamicness to populate those. But pretty much everything else you're going to have available. So get in here and play with this and get really comfortable with what's happening and see what else needs to be built that you guys can actually work effectively in this system. Tracy, did you have a question? No, I'm just... Okay, just to make sure. <laughs> so let's get some feedback from you guys. What are, your, what are you excited about in the system? What are you kind of nervous about? What are your next steps? What would you like to see happen? I, I'm a little bit nervous about the... Uh, when you're creating all these cases. I know as an advisor, I'm supposed to go back and read and understand the history of the student. Um, is the task supposed to, am I supposed to read those tasks as well to let the students know, for example, hey, um, you're supposed to get transcripts, or, or is it assigned to the owner that's gonna, I don't know, I, I'm, I guess I'm a little confused because. Um, where the handle is? Yeah, so maybe when the process everyone is going to be determined mm -hmm. then we will all know yeah. what we're supposed to do. Yeah, I think right now it's a little up in the air, right? Because again, we're all moving into this new thing together. But I think that's a really good question to pose to them because that puts that on their radar because it's actually something we really do need to hammer out. So that's awesome. Yay. Tracy. So an inquiry comes in and Lois does her thing and then say she assigns it to me. Mm -hmm. And so then it will come up in my cases as an inquiry, and I'll do what I do, and maybe I have to make a couple phone calls and a couple emails, and then eventually a week later the student applies. Mm -hmm. Do I 
close the inquiry case. Lois will be doing that. Lois will close the inquiry. Lois will get the application because right now we're still using the paper app piece. Yeah. So she'll get the application and once she identifies the student was already a prospect in the inquiry pool, she'll close it. Right. I'll convert it. They convert it. Yes. She's going to say convert it's converted. Oh, okay. just curious. So there, let me just as a clarifying, there's no inquiry case that just stays open. Right. There are cases, and as we talked about this <coughs> or whatever, and then what we're maintaining now that Lois is in the process of updating, where you're going to track convert and all that stuff, will be a field that's a status field that's attached to the record itself. Mm -hmm. So that student will always stay as a as a person, as an entity, in contacts. But their status may change from a prospect to now converted or whatever whatever names you all use for them. And then we can build processes that look at that field and eventually identify like their communication plans or the process or where the owner should be now once they're in that status. So those are all things we still have to talk about. But just keep in mind that that status field will be the way that we determine where they are in the pipeline, essentially. They're not going to be closing a piece of where they are in the phone. I'm still, I don't know if I'm the only one, but I'm still a little confused by the cases versus case message. A little bit. I'm sorry. <coughs> I haven't gotten that yet. That's normal. I think it's, what's, one of our issues, we started and Lois had to develop a system because we're working with it, so we right. have to unlearn it. Everyone else is getting because this is, this is, this is going to be the first rendition. Yeah. We're trying to unpack it, the same thing with Joanne, like what we've been doing. Yeah. Um, so that's that's kind of where we're trying to get, get yeah. the clarity. Totally understand. This is going to take a little while to unpack, okay. it, and, that's, and that's a very normal thing to happen. Um, because it's so flexible, it's kind of hard to define it in very finite terms, right? Contacts are people, that's very easy. Um, cases can be touch points, they can be action items, they can be escalated issues, they can be anything. The idea is document. So just think of cases and case messages as level one documentation versus level two. Level one, high, level two, detail. Right? If you start there and then start applying the documentation to certain topics, yeah. I think it'll kind of start to fall in line with it. I think once we standardize, like you said, the cases, that will help us. Totally. Because right now, even with myself, I'm in follow-up call. I have to create those. I can let them pre-populate them with mm -hmm. templates. Yeah. So I have to create them and we want to keep them consistent. So. Yeah. That's good. So. Is, is there like an online manual or resource center that can define something? Compass is it. That's, Compass, that is, that is the end all the Knowledge goal. tab. Knowledge base, exactly. Uh, so if I click in there and say cases, it'll tell me how to do it? Yeah, there are help documentation. It goes cases, yeah. case messages, how to create, etc. Oh, there are also me. training videos that literally go and click by Compass. click by click. Yes. Okay. Everything in Compass. I will say, however, though, that's technically how to use the system, but we have process uses right. on how we choose to use them. So cases versus case messages, we have to define internally, and that definition may be different here in Providence than it is for my staff. So we just have to determine what that is. So I think there will be some ongoing discussions maybe in the coming weeks that Nina and Damien will have to kind of lead, and then we'll build a process around how that works for everybody. This is a question more for Gina, um, but is the CWPD going to have access to using this for applications, and is there a timeline for the rollout of that? So, or? yes, and what's going on right now is that because we're working with IT for IT solutions, we're only focusing at the current moment on getting prospects and applicants up, but your application is going to have to be built before we can put any information into the system for CWPD. Your inquiry has to be built and your application has to be built. We can't just, because of we don't know what IT solutions are yet to force this information to colleague, we have to understand what you need from this to go into colleague. And right now, the data workbook that we're currently working on only includes the credit side, correct? Okay. So we have a couple of things. Um, for instance, we have one that we need to launch the end of April. Should we just continue to use our old way? Of doing things. You know, Ross was just asking us a question too. I think that somewhere along the line, the conversations, we just have to all pull together and understand what your launch time is. But Jamie has been putting the focus on the credit side right now, especially with the new admissions process. But that doesn't mean you can't use it. I'm thinking next month, probably have to use their old system until we can understand the needs. 
Well, maybe maybe you and I and Gina and Jamie or whoever can have a sidebar conversation on that because there may be a short-term solution with the forms and things that we could come up with that would suit your needs that wouldn't involve the much bigger picture. So let's have another conversation on that because I'd be happy to help try to accommodate that. Just so you're not stuck in your current process if you want to. It just needs to happen. Not to. I, I know you guys have like a lot of no, that's not um, other pressures, but we have to get the application probably done, up and done within the next couple of weeks because and not everyone that applies is going to go into colleague. Right. Mm -hmm. Use it in a different can, way. So can you drop like a fake application word, even just like what fields you need and that kind of stuff, and shoot it off to us in email, and mm -hmm. we could start there, and then we could at least assess how big of a project it is and how long it's going to take, and if we can do it. Because I mean, I'm not familiar with your process, so you know, it may be very straightforward, and it sounds like it. We use web forms on the website in the past, yeah, and it's so. a lot of manual. You can't export data from the web forms, mm -hmm. so it's like copying and pasting. And so we would just do iterations of an application for. We're using terms for our iterations, so we would just have to understand what iteration. Maybe we use a program for an iteration. I don't know, or maybe we do use a term. I'm not quite sure. And then we have to identify which one we want to go into colleague and don't want to go into college and we have to sort of put holes on the ones that we don't want to go into college because this is going to be a dump of all application information it's going to i don't want to say the word data dump and all this but it's going to go into college so we have to tell the system don't pull these applications because the way it's being designed is it's going to pull any application information into college so i'll send that yeah yeah we'll start there no promises but we'll try Anything else? So when you did the compass piece, I'm sorry. No, it's fine. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. When you did the compass piece, yeah. did you show how to navigate in there to define what you need to find? I was here for, I left at 11, so I don't know what you did from 11 to 12. No, we didn't navigate the okay. compass. Um, if any of these menu items will take you directly to that page. There are search bars at the top. Uh -huh. So like for the knowledge base, for example, um, you'll be able to pick the product radius and then you'll type in kind of what you need so for you made cases and case messages and it'll pull up anything related to those items okay. and i'll tell you this is a document this is um you know what i'm saying videos etc okay and what and one more thing yes you have collaborate up there so what do each of those four things mean yeah. I mean, I know it's, I, I, I can read, I know what they mean, but I'm just saying. No, I totally understand. So Collaborate allows you to talk to other Hobson's clients okay. that use your stuff and say, hey, what are y'all doing? Help me out. How okay. are you guys using these things? So people do what you do every day instead of talking to Hobson's. Right? And how do we know when they answer? Um, email notifications. Oh, okay. okay. Um, and you can join groups. You can create groups like... New England Radius users, what's up? You know, oh, right. small liberal arts, continuing study space, join <coughs> groups and see what other people are asking too and join in those conversations. You'll get email notifications when you get replies back. Oh, okay. Product suggestions, um, you can see what other clients are saying, hey, make Radius do this. You can put in your own, you can vote them up and down um, and get uh, about quarterly. Um, developers give feedback like, hey guys, this is what we're doing, this is what we're working on, versus like, nah, we're good, we ain't going to do that. Okay. They won't say it like that, but sometimes they will. Okay. Um, knowledge base, obviously, learning. Right. Um, and support cases, so when things go awry and you need help, you'll be like, hey, please somebody help me do this. Or like, um, the system is down, is it down for everybody, is it us, is it you, those types of things. And is this system, is that help section, um, what's the word? Is it, is it a good use of um, support for people who are new? At this? Yes, okay. this is a great onboarding tool. A lot of clients will direct new users here, learn functionality, then we will tell you how we use it. So what, like Marcus was saying, this will teach you the click by click by click here. Obviously business processes dictate when and, wh and why. Okay. That's your supplement, but have them watch the videos. You now know how to make a case. Let me tell you when you're gonna do that now. Okay. You know what I mean? Great question. Can, can you talk a little bit about, maybe this is more for in the background, um, the chain of like what happens? Like, how do you elevate or escalate a question? Like Lois, how, what if Lois had a question? Who does she contact and stuff like that? And where does it go from there? Do you want to answer this? So uh, uh, you mean related to a particular record or the system itself and Both. the problem? Um, so internally, Gina is the project lead for SCS, and then um, I'm the overall project lead. So I mean, I would go with, with Gina first, unless you have somebody in the middle that you want to work with, and then 
if needed, she'll involve me, and then if we have to take it to Hobson, she'll certainly do that. Okay. That answer, did everyone understand that answer? Go to your internal resources first, because there may be things that you're like, I don't know what's happening, and it may just be you don't have access to it as a user. Go to your internal resources. If they're like, oh, this is a real issue, then they can come to Hobson's on your behalf. I also Great think um, this is just off the cuff, and I haven't talked to Gina about this either, but I think it might make sense for us to have a regular meeting, whether it be monthly for the next six months or a year or longer, that just, I come up here as a touch point to help you all, and maybe there's collective issues and brainstorming and process we can all just talk about. That might make sense to get us all together and do it. When you say you come up here, what do you mean? All right. Thank you all. Do you have more questions? Good job. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Good luck in radius. Remember, poke all the rolls.